Hey everybody, welcome to Andy's favorite time of week. My live show's on Thursday. Great to have you. It's where I help you build a career you love. Thanks for being in the house with me today, if you are here with me today. If you are, get in the chat, say hi. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you need because today's topic is really your topic. So we're gonna we're gonna focus an hour on what it is you want to ask me, and it's, it's your questions, my answers. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to start off with just a quick hello. I'm going to let you know what I got coming up next Friday. It's a free resume writing class. I want to actually show you what you get. I know uh, I, I know it's, it's hard to visualize the awesomeness of the free giveaways. So I literally want to show you what you're going to get for free. And then we'll dive right in. We'll spend the entire hour on your, uh, on your questions. We'll have a lot of fun. I missed you last week. Uh, when I was traveling, but I'm back and uh, and at it today. So uh, let's see. Uh, looks like we got a bunch of people shuffling in. Looks like everything is okay. Uh, let me let me show you actually what it is that you're gonna get. And let me just make sure that my stream is uh, is all good. It looks like it is. Uh, I've got a resume writing class. It's not just a resume writing class. Those of you that are on my email list, you got an announcement yesterday. I've got a free live resume writing masterclass. This is the this is the actual booklet I'm going to give you at the session. So you get a session, or sorry, you get a, you get a booklet for the session that helps you follow me along with the notes and slides and those kind of things or the information, and then I give you one after the session to uh, to actually populate your resume. I actually want to show you what the inside of that looks like. But basically what this is all about is I, I did this uh, I, twice last year. I think we're probably going to do it once or twice this year. And on April 12th, uh, we're going we're gonna to conduct this. You have to sign up by Monday, April 8th because I, I do a little pregame and some, some homework and some insight on, on three of the toughest sections in the resume, the, the, the career profile, the career highlights, and the professional experience. So I give you some lessons even in advance of the, of the workshop, and then we go through the workshop, and it's really a lot of fun. So that booklet that I just held up, I actually want to show you what's inside. Now this is free. This is what you're going to get if you come to the, to the class. So you get this workbook. That was kind of what I, that was what I flashed. Uh, there's a little bit of background on me. We don't need to go through all of that or the links. But uh, but you actually get these lessons that I'm going to send you in advance. I've populated them here to kind of embody the emails. You know, this one here happens to be on the career profile. What is it? Why it's important? What's happening when the reviewer looks at it? How to position yourself in the in the right light? All that good stuff. And so I did this for the for that the career highlights for the career or for the professional experience section. And then what I did was I gave you some instructions on how to use the builder. Now obviously I'm gonna walk you through it in the session, but this is really how to use the guide. Uh, we're gonna give you some resume templates and all that good stuff. These are actually going to come to you in Word documents. So you're gonna get the professional template and you're gonna get the collegiate template in Word documents so that you actually have them. So you can just go right in and populate these as we show you how to do that. And then each of these sections uh, in the booklet is going to lay out exactly what the career profile is, what you should do, all that good stuff, the topics you should cover. I'm going to give you the template so you can populate and fill in the blank. I've got some samples and so on. The career highlights, we do the same thing. All of this is the gift. This is, this is the giveaway. So if you, if you come to the, to the session, there's a journal at the end, which is really cool. Uh, as well. All of that is the giveaway. Now, what I'm going to do is for anybody who uh, joins us, um, you're going to get an email lesson on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Then Friday morning, you're going to get your access link. You come to the session. It's live. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to teach you how to do everything in there, and that's free. And the booklet is free, and the Word templates are free if you come to the live session. Now, we had so much uh, demand for this last year, and we had so many people ask us for the replay and all that good stuff, as you can probably imagine. I couldn't attend. I, I attended, but I really would love to watch the replay. 
And so what I decide, that's a lot of stuff that's in there. And most of that is what I teach in my $300 resume workshop. But I'm giving it away for free and it's free. So if you come, you can have that for free. But what I decided to do this time was because we had so many people that were bummed out that they couldn't make it. I decided that I was going to package all of this stuff up and the replay for you and I was going to put it in a little system. So if you want, uh, whether you come to the program or not, you're actually going to have access to this uh, system for a very small fee. So I, I basically packaged up the program, gave you some instructions here, and then what you'll get uh, is basically the, the workshop itself comes in the system, that's a, that's a, a video there, uh, you know, we have some notes and instructions. I'm going to give you the download. I'm going to give you the templates. I'm going to give you the audio so that you can actually download the audio from the session. And all of that stuff is, is in the system. And then what I decided to do, just to entice you a little bit more, is I've got this 90-minute instructional video um, that goes deeper into the resume. I'm going to give you the actual Word document of all of these layouts, but basically I'm covering the feedback from all of the resumes that I review from my boot campers, all the common questions that they ask me, and also I'm going to go through all of these layouts in this video, in, in this video here that I'm going to give you if you, if you want to uh, join me for that. The other thing is uh, all these questions are answered. And, uh, and here's the specific layouts that I go through with how to handle employment gaps. I go through how exactly to handle returning from the workforce. So a lot of these nuances that I actually cannot go through in the, in the session because, I mean, it's, it's only a couple of hours, the session, uh, I decided I was going to package all that up. And if you want that, whether you attend the session or whether you don't, uh, that's just going to be $49 for us to maintain it. So, so that's something that you can have. So if you are not sure if you can make the free class next Friday, what I would suggest is if you're interested in getting a lot of the resume material, just register for it. And then make sure you're getting the email lessons on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You're going to get the lessons on the career profile, the career highlights, the professional experience section. You'll have the opportunity to attend Friday, but if you don't, if you don't attend, or even if you do, you'll have the opportunity to grab all of that stuff for forty-nine bucks. I just wanted to make it, um, you, you know, a very low, modest cost because I know resume writing is very tough. It's a very tough thing. So there's a lot of stuff in there uh, for forty-nine bucks, and 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 if you can come to the show, it's free. But if you can't. You might want to grab that. So I just wanted to let you know it's going to be available. There's not going to be a whole lot of hoopla. I'm not going to be sending a whole bunch of sales emails about it. It's just something I thought would be nice for the people who who really, really were interested in it, but just couldn't make it. So I hope that helps. And I I really I wanted to show that to you because and, and also you're also getting a little feel for what the inside of the Mile Walk Academy looks like. Um, that's a very, very tight, small program, but there's a lot of powerful information in it. So I just wanted to let you know it's there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I'm now going to shut all that noise down and get to your questions. I hope everybody is doing well. I, Kara, I didn't see you screaming at me, so I'm assuming that that's going well as well. I got my life is better with chickens around cup, uh, and um, I got a lot of eggs in my kitchen, and, and I think I'm going to maybe eat some after this show. All right, let me see. I got uh, Fantoche. Hello, my name is, I think it's Fantosh. Uh, I, oh, Carlos from Brazil. Uh, what, first question, what can I do in order to get an organized career without confusing other areas in my life? Oh my goodness, Carlos. I'm not even sure what to tell you. Uh, that is what we call throwing me into the big blue ocean. And I don't even, I'm not even sure how to, how to ask that or answer that. Uh, if you would like, you are more than welcome to head to the chat at the bottom and try to give me some more color. Or after this is recorded, it, uh, as soon as we're done, as soon as we click off, you have access to the comment section and you can put some information in there. If you can give me some more information, I'll be happy to type my answer to you. But just too, it's too difficult to speculate on all that. Johnny Stevens, my company's financials... Oh, um, I will answer that. Kara, thank you for that. I will answer that in a second. Um, actually, let, wait, let me, before I take Johnny Stevens' questions, 
the the what I just showed you folks, you can get that now. I mean, the the resume writing masterclass is actually packaged um, and you can have access to all that stuff with the obvious with the exception obviously of the video from the show next Friday. So as people who register start to get their emails next week, you can actually grab what I just showed you and you can actually take the booklet and you can read through the booklet and all the instructions. I mean, it's all pretty awesome. Uh, quasi self-explanatory it makes a whole lot more sense when you hear me walking you through it but but you can have that and the video on the, the more resume layouts and all that good stuff is in there so we're gonna start circulating we're gonna you know give people a chance to get in before Monday and then on Tuesday morning we're gonna start circulating but uh, but if you if you want all that information we, we have that I mean that what I just showed you is is up and running uh, with the exception of the of the one video for the for the master class, so I hope that helps. And all you need to do, if you want to really be safe, is just register for the show. And if you register for the show, when you get the emails throughout the week, you'll have a chance to look at you know to look at that if you want to. So I hope that helps. And that was for John Paul. Uh, but Johnny Stevens, let's answer your question here. My company's financials have left me managing volunteers from other groups. Okay. This is innovative and I have direct management experience. How do I portray this correctly in manager role interviews? Johnny, I don't care if they're volunteers or contractors or people you're managing from other groups that are on loan. It makes no difference. I would handle that the same way I would handle any other managerial duties. Uh, when people are asking you about your management style, your philosophy and all that good stuff, it makes no difference that they're volunteers. So I'm I'm not uh, I'm not quite sure specifically, um, you know, if, if your question is beyond that. But it's not as if you need to, you know, go out of your way to mention that you're managing people who are volunteering. You're managing. You're managing. Uh, it, it it it. There's no difference to me whether you know they're they're technically you know you're you're I hate this word but a subordinate on an org chart or whether there's somebody that's just kicking in out of the kindness of their heart or whether there's somebody that you're you know you have on loan from another group so i i i i i wouldn't i wouldn't be overly concerned about that and i'll go you one better on your resume you're still managing the people so you still should put you know resp responsible for managing you know however many people this is doing whatever it is that they're doing and what the outcome is of of, of your management of them and what they are producing and if you come to the resume writing class on april 12th i can show you exactly how to do that <laughs> All right, Layla from Germany. I just received a good job offer after months of search, but I also received an interview for a dream job. No way I can delay the first one to decide what are my options. So Layla, while I don't love the scenario where somebody signs an employment agreement, then starts working and all that good stuff, the only thing I would hate more than you breaking your word and your bond is for you to miss a chance to go to your dream job. So what I would do if it was me is I would, you know, you signed, you can't you can't wait, you got to go, you accept it, you go. If the interviewing opportunity is available, truly available and you want to go and kick the tires and see what's what, I would go there and I would try, I would follow through with it because the one thing that you never want to do is look over your shoulder at something. This is no different, folks. By the way, Layla, it's a great question. Folks, this is no different then you choosing a career path and then getting stuck in it and you're constantly looking over your shoulder at something else you should have done or should have tried. So the fact of the matter is that for Layla, the timing is unfortunate. And while I would have loved for both of those, you know, the one opportunity and the other opportunity to be working perfectly in, har you know, in harmony time-wise, life doesn't happen that way. And while it's incredibly uncomfortable, the only thing that's more uncomfortable, Layla, is you living every day thinking about somewhere else you want to be. Those are your options. So I wouldn't say anything to the first company if you've already started. And I would definitely go and I would pursue it if it was truly my dream job. And I would see if it was truly my dream job. And one thing that I would highly recommend that you do is uh, we did a video a couple of months ago called How to Choose the Right Job. If you have not seen that video, I would highly recommend that you not only go to that video, but you do exactly the formula that I laid out for you so that you can identify your criteria and be absolutely positively certain that this other job, if it should come to fruition, is truly your dream job.
before you quit the other one. That's what I would do. I know it's awful, but it's more awful to live with yourself every day and look over your shoulder. All right, hope that helps. Blitz, how are you? Where you been? Maybe you've been quiet or maybe you just haven't been here. I finally did the magic and the magic did me and received an offer for employment. Oh, that's where you've been. With a very big prominent company in the role as a supervisor, but the start date, oh, but the start date, the HR director set is six weeks out. Is that weird or strange that you're starting a date for an illustrious position is set for six weeks out? Yes. So, hate to say this, everybody, this goes, it doesn't matter what your situation is. When you sign your employment agreement that says, I accept, the further away your acceptance date is from your start date, the, le the further away, the less likely you show up or that the company has you show up. Okay, so what happens over the course of those six weeks? A lot can happen, right? You might change your mind, you might change your heart, you might, you might be Layla and you might find something else. Or the company might be dragging its feet. Now, one thing I will tell you, Blitz, it is typically unlikely that the company wants to push the start date out six weeks if they don't have a good reason for wanting to do that. So the one thing that I would say before you get all you know bent out of shape here, you could be you could be getting pushed out for six weeks because your boss is on vacation, your boss is doing an international tour. Um, there's who knows a software system that isn't going to be implemented that is vital for you to be able to do your job. I there could be a million reasons, and perhaps the company thought that it was going to take them longer to hire somebody than it actually did. There, my, this is my way of saying there can be a million reasons why that is the case. However, if there is no reason why the company wants to extend you and the employee wants to have a, a far out start date, that's bad. And I as an employer do not want to sit for that. I appreciate that everybody feels bad about giving a two week notice when they're in the middle of a project, but trust me when I tell you folks, I love you all, but, I hate that expression, I love you, but, but nobody is nearly as vital to their company as they think they are. Life will go on without you. Okay, so give an appropriate notice, two weeks, three weeks. If you're very, very senior, maybe four. But, but trust me, if there is more than four weeks between the time you sign, and I'm talking for most positions, okay? So, you know, junior positions up to a couple hundred thousand. If you have more than a four-week window between the time you sign and the time you start, that's bad. So what four weeks looks like is, okay, you're farting around, you, you sign your paperwork, you got to go back, you got to resign. Maybe you want to resign on a Friday instead of, say, a Tuesday or something like that. You want to give the full two weeks and you want to take a week off. That's what four weeks looks like, okay? So, so just be careful about that. So Blitz, my advice back to you is go back to the company and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go, man. Let's, let's get rolling. Is there a reason why uh why we need six weeks or or okay that's fine and then if they come up with a reason and it's and you believe it and the rationale is good then what i would do is say what can i do to get to get to my homework or do my homework before i get started can i get a computer can i get access to the systems can i get whatever this and that you know i mean i would i would try to do can i meet with some people for lunch or for coffee or come to the office you know once a week just to get assimilated. I, I would do that, a lot of companies do that. So that, I hope that answers your question. I hope that helps. All right, PH, great news, started job search January 29, email from recruiters. I'm not sure what that is, but good for you. Mike Morgan, how are you? That is one way of looking at it. Okay, wait, I think, hang on. Uh, great news, started job search January 2019, email from recruiters. March 1st, five interviews, 30 days later an offer, start Monday, 28% pay over. <laughs> Wonderful. Th you are welcome for the mental aerobics uh, after 12-month volunteer. I love that. Email me. Send me an email, damn it. You, you all got my email. I love to hear these stories. By the way, I treasure that stuff. Don't think for one second that I don't read that. Everybody who's out there, 
right, that sends me an email that tells me how I help them get a job, I keep. I not only read it, I keep it. How about that? I got a folder, literally, of all your success stories. It's just, I, I, I go back to them and I read them from time to time because I love to hear it. I wanna know that I'm making a difference. Everybody wants to know that. This doesn't always, like I don't always get the feel. This is great that you're here, but I don't always know what transpires. And then you get busy, you get off, you start your new job, which 28% pay increase, and then I don't hear from you for a while. But I should be because I got a leadership monthly program that you all should check out. It's my, actually, Kara, can we drop that in the, um, in, in the chat, my leadership monthly live program. If you are looking to develop your career, if you're looking to grow your leadership skills, if you are looking for all kinds of high performance help, uh, we just did a, a session a couple weeks back on building your confidence. And then we did a whole session, it was like 90 minutes. Everybody gets a workbook, I write everything out. There's the summary, there's thought provokers, there's areas, there's a challenge, there's areas for, you, for your notes and all that good stuff. And then a couple weeks later, I gave a pep talk, uh, which is, which by the way, I, I circulated as a sample, which is actually on the page, so you can kind of get a feel for what the program is like. You will not be getting the pep talks that I'm giving my folks each month for free, but I wanted you to get an idea what that looks like. And then in a, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be doing the focus discussion. So everything on how to focus from the top down, from your life, down to your projects, down to the project, down to the month, down to the minute. Like how do I stay focused with you? Everything is in there and um, it's pretty cool. And obviously you get the recordings, you get access to the library, and actually I'm still giving away my Career Accelerator $400 program. So you should get in that. And everybody should get in that. But Kara, pop that in there, will you? All right. Connie Cotter! Connie, I loved our lunch yesterday. I had lunch with Connie Cotter, who is one of our beloved boot campers and Leadership Monthly leaders. So, Connie, I'm so happy for you. And Connie's starting a great new job on Monday. All right. Love these first guys. <laughs> our Yetman, huge fan. I wonder our, what the R stands for. Can you tell me that one of these times? Okay, so you are an RN, so a nurse of some kind. Uh, how can frontline RN uh, transitional to senior leadership role in eHealth strategic? Done lots of projects tied to, I'm not even, I'm not sure what you are asking me there. Um, I am. I am. Uh, I'm sure you were trying to be brief, but I. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Um, done lots of projects and tied it to. I'm assuming results, but recruiters want formal title. I, just give them a functional title, and try to drop the dollars with your offer. I'm not sure it. This stuff, by the way, I don't care what your function is, anybody, I mean, regardless of what your, I mean, I do care what you do, but regardless of what your function is, you've got to be able to sell yourself in the process. If recruiters are trying to, to, to drop your offer down, what I would say then is either one, uh, you're looking at the wrong opportunities, or two, you're not selling yourself effectively throughout the process. Or three, maybe you're selling yourself, but not to the extent you could, but you're definitely not negotiating properly. So, I mean, I would point, I mean, I don't even know where to begin on this. I wouldn't worry about the resume as much other than I would make it more of a functional title if you, if you have it. Second thing is I would definitely be checking out my interview playlists and my salary negotiation playlists. And if you, if you want, if you need, if you want to be more specific, um, either head to the bottom and, and, and type it in or drop it in the comments after the video and I'll answer it. All right. Angelie, government job related question, interview next week for you to explain how you see yourself fitting in. I already worked there as a contractor. However, this is different department and a federal position. So I, well, first off, you don't know how you fit in until you know what it is they need you to do. So remember, when you are in an interview, it is not about you talking about how great you are because you might be really great at this stuff over here at this other department, but they need you to do different things for this department over here. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to say, what is it that needs to be done 
most that's most important whatever is the most important thing that needs to be done as you if, as you elicit that information then you need to map how what you bring to the table would help facilitate the development the design the development the implementation the results of that and that's that's called selling to the gap but basically what's their problem and how do you solve their problem so for me so if you have a, a job searching issue, I have a job searching solution kind of thing. That's what I mean. So when you're in an interview, you're doing the same thing I am. You have to figure out what it, their issue is and then you have to figure out how to tell your story so that you can tell them how your history, your experience, and the way you see things maps and, and the way you do things maps to what it is that they need you to do. And that's, I mean, that's how you fit in. And then you also want to make sure you understand the cultural components. But you already have a good feel for what the culture is like at that place because you already worked there. So that shouldn't be too hard. All right. Ileana, how are you? From Greece. Wonderful. Do you have any advice on how to hunt down a job in business data analysis as an intern without any professional experience? Yes. So you hold a BS in stats. So the first place that I would go is I would go, I would do a couple things. I would do them all simultaneously. I would go to my university or wherever you got that bachelor's of science and I would look at the and, and I don't know if you you know if you are you know you're looking at you know you're looking for an internship so if you're currently in school which you likely are I would go to the the placement office or the and the alumni office see if there are any internships available or any of that good stuff that is uh, one of the greatest avenues to do that the other thing is lots of times and I don't know what it's like in Greece but in the US for some of the universities organizations will come to the university and they will make themselves available for interviews you would submit your resume for whether it's a summer internship or, or a Christmas time internship whatever it might be you know depending on the season and then they will interview you that's one route the other route is you can look at some of the job boards and I'm guessing that there are job boards specific to internships although I don't know them off the top of my head but I'm sure a quick Google search would would yield them and the other thing that I would do is I would go at the professional job boards and I would I would type the words in, in I literally would put internship in statistics and that kind of stuff in there and I would look that way and then obviously the networking aspect and historically at your university there are probably organizations that hire interns or uh, we call it co-ops where they will they rotate semesters of school and and then semesters of work and things of that nature the companies that are apt to co-op are also apt to give uh, straight up internships as well those are those are the avenues that I would look at so I hope that helps on interview anxiety I would watch my how to, uh, job interview confidence interview uh, video uh, don't uh, this wait I'm you know what I am glad you said this the so for those of you that are that interview regardless of where you're interviewing and I know English is a popular language throughout the world and many of the interviews are conducted in English and I, I have a huge almost 40 percent of our of the mile walk Academy community is international which means I mean almost half the people are outside the US one thing that I will tell you this is my perspective for and for what it's worth but I actually think that this is this holds pretty true when somebody has an accent or you know English is their second or third or fourth language the one thing that I know is you speak at least one more language than I do okay so when I'm interviewing you and if somebody has an accent or any of that stuff or their English is not perfect I actually I, I, it does not it's not an issue with me and most interviewers high professional good companies and all that stuff it's not an issue with them either but what 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 we do is we tend to have these internal fears that are not necessarily founded or substantiated and we get ourselves all worked up when the fact of the matter is the interviewer would probably be fairly gracious with that I certainly am and somebody if I'm on the phone with somebody who's a little more soft-spoken I'll ask them to raise their voice that's all if, if 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 I didn't catch something I'll just ask them to repeat it that's all I I would not get too too worked up um, I, I have a feeling that some of, of your anxiety or any of you your nerves are are self-generated 
They really are. I, I'm telling you, I've been interviewing a long time and, and I have represented, and I know a lot of you know this, but as a recruiter for Milewalk, I've, we've represented more than 200 companies that we've recruited for. And we have not had an issue with people who uh, were from, from different countries that would come in, whether you're from Europe or Asia or India, wherever it is that you're from, and, and the accents that we all have, hell, I have an accent. So it just we just haven't really had, we haven't had that, uh, that problem. If somebody was just a tremendously poor communicator, that's a different story. But my guess is that you're not, and my guess is that you're probably quite smart, and uh, I would not be nervous, and I would, I would definitely check out my job interview confidence video. But I, I do wish you lots of luck. I, I, I would just try to remember that when you go into when you go into your interviews. All right, Olga, how are you? Kristen, how are you? All right, wait. This looks like a question, folks. Make sure to put the question marks. I'm I'm usually pretty careful as I step through these, and then Kara kind of lets me know if I skip them. But just try to make sure you put a few question marks or at least one in front of them. But Kristen, I got you here. I had an interview last week. Sent my thank you note the next day. Wonderful and haven't heard anything back, what should I do? So, um, okay, for all of you, the anybody, anytime you send a thank you email, send it and don't worry about getting a response. Okay, don't have any expectations that they need to get back to you and they need to be all cozy and warm. If they do, great. If they don't, I would not be overly concerned about it. I'd be more, I'd pay more attention to, at the end of the interview, did, you know, did they say, hey, Kristen, this is great. We're going to get back to you in two days, and then they don't get back to you. Or we're going to get back to you in a week. Or we've got some other candidates uh, that we're interviewing, and it's going to be about 10 days or two weeks, and we'll get back to you. That's what I'm more concerned about. Don't I would not keep emailing them until you know what the what the um, kind of what the protocol is, or or hopefully they've managed your expectations. Now, if you did not ask them, it doesn't make any difference who you're interviewing with. I don't care if you're interviewing with the top dog or the bottom dog. It makes no difference. You should ask every person you're interviewing with, meaning, wait, don't get, wait, don't get mad. If you go in for a phone screen and you're just talking, it's a text screen, you ask the person on the other end, hey, this is great, I'd love to continue, what would be next? Just get them to say something. Get them to say, hey, well, I don't make those decisions, but I'm gonna pass my you know, notes over to so-and-so and they're gonna get back to you, great. What's usually the next step in the process? If the person is interviewing, they have an idea of what that process looks like. You just want to get some kind of insight. And if you're really on your game, and if you have interview intervention, I talk about you know how to make sure that they don't have reservations and that other stuff. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you should be making sure that you're closing up those interviews. Now, if you're in an interview with four people, and it's either a you know one after another, somebody in that process is the quarterback, probably, or you're gonna be meeting with the recruiter or HR person or somebody like that who's probably navigating that process. You wanna make sure you're communicating with that person. What would be next? When can I expect to hear from you? These are questions that you should be should be asking. But that that's the more important thing there. All right. Carola Martin Del Campo. All right, hi Andrew. What or where, where? What or where can I do go when a, with a career crisis? I feel at a loss. I am an artist and researcher. Love to create different stuff. No job is enough for me. Are there tests? Something else I can do to find my way back into a productive human? Okay, I uh, Caroline, Carolina. Um, I'm going to give you a place to go. I am going to qualify this recommendation. There is a place called uScience, uscience.com. I have not taken the test. I am in communication with the people at uScience because I want to learn what their product is about. And I got a recommendation from one of my friends who is in the counseling area as it, uh, in, in the high schools. And, but this, this product is used for the high schools, colleges, and professionals about uh, career changing, career development, where should I go, what should I do, and, and that kind of stuff. Now, I have not taken the test, but I saw the results and the packages that they give you. It was pretty awesome. And I think it's like 30, 40 bucks. I, by the way, I, I, don't, I do not get anything to recommend them. I am not officially related 
to them on any kind of professional level. We are communicating to see if I can examine what it is that their product does, the results, and then I want to see if I want to officially recommend it. But in the meantime, that might be a place you can go to check out. That's an external source, uscience.com. It's Y-O-U science.com, I believe. Check it out. Second thing is, I would look at my job search masterclass. It's free, it's a three-part video series. The first one is on making sure you're doing this upfront stuff to evaluate that. And I think do those two things in combo, you'll be in good shape. All right, mom, how you doing? Hope you're doing well, call you later. Family L, hi Andrew, I'm still having difficulty articulating my exit statement or posting. Hang on, is there a, uh... all right, I think there's a question here. Uh, hi, Andrew. I'm still having difficulty articulating my exit statement or posi- uh, I'm what, positioning statement. I'm not, I'm not sure if you mean an elevator pitch. Specifically around, oh, exit statement. Specifically on the reason I left my former employee. The reason I exited was some very heavy-duty cultural issues and a bad manager. The issues had started to impact my performance. I left suddenly, have taken the last six months to focus on family. Okay, so here's what I would do. First off, all of you, and there are many of you that have situations like Family L who, you know, it just wasn't a good fit. Okay, it just wasn't. This doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make the people at the company bad people. It just it just didn't fit, right? Relationships don't always last, right? I had to go through a bunch of relationships, so I found the love of my life, all right? This just happens. So my recommendation in an interview is to talk about what you're looking for in the context of what happened previously. So the moment any of you start saying, well, I didn't like my boss, it wasn't a good fit, they're unethical, this and that, you're gonna have a whole lot of explaining to do. Okay, because what naturally happens, not that it should, is the interviewer favors the company. The company gets the benefit of the doubt, you have to explain yourself. You're guilty till proven innocent, kind of thing. So what's a better way to approach that is, you know, I realized after working there for, I don't care if it was two weeks or 10 years, it makes no difference, that I was really looking for an environment, you know, I, I I decided I'm looking for an environment that presents these opportunities, this kind of culture, and so forth. And I just decided it was time that I really put my effort into doing that. And when I came to that decision, I also had a family situation that I wanted to address. And it was just the perfect opportunity for me to know it was time for me to move on, focus on my family, and now I'm getting back into the game, to, into, into work, and this is what I'm looking for. But one of the reasons that I came to the conclusion that I wanted to leave is I just, I realized I really thrive in environments that are. You're talking about the future. They'll get it. They'll read between the lines. If they really start poking back, like what didn't you like about, um, you know, the former employer, like if they get really aggressive, I would still keep, keep leaning forward. I would still keep leaning forward. And you can always say, well, nothing was just so terrible. I mean, I enjoyed working there, but you know, I'm just in the in the context of our discussion now. Um, it, I didn't love my uh, my job so much that I was willing not to to completely focus on my family issue. That's I mean, I would just I would handle it that way. So you could package that up and flower that up however you want. I also would recommend that you get interview intervention. It's still on back order, but it's it's got it's like any day now. The thousands of books that I had to order again uh, for you guys uh, should be coming. As a matter of fact, I'm waiting for word today from the fulfillment company to make sure that the hardcover is available. Uh, but in the meantime, if you don't have it uh, for seven dollars shipping and handling, that book will be shipped out within a week or so, and then the ebook and the audio book are available to you. So 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 try that out. And pretty soon I'm going to be doing a workbook. So it's. Um, you know, grab that because I have a, a section in there on the 14, you know, kind of my silver bullet interview questions. That's one of them. Why'd you leave? Why'd you, why'd you leave your current employer? Oh, Lorenza, my European boot camper friend with the, my favorite name of all time. Varun, how you doing? Buddy, hey, thanks for the emails and the LinkedIn stuff. By the way, if you guys are not linked to me, 
I would love to support your networking efforts. All you need to do is send me a LinkedIn connection request and just say, hey, Andy, I'm in your community, would love to connect. And then I just accept them. Uh, happy to do that. All right, so, hello, Andy. My question is, how important is it to reflect on LinkedIn the date you last worked when you haven't worked for a while, or should you just leave the date ongoing? You know, Varun, that's up to you. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really care. As a recruiter, when I look at somebody's profile, their LinkedIn profile is a public-facing social media profile. That's how I look at it. Now, if you hand me your resume, I would like to know uh, packages. I would like to know that you, you know, that you wrapped up, you know, last July or whatever it is. But, um, but no, I, I, you know, it's up to you. The one thing I would not do, and by the way, folks, that okay, Varun, I, it's not that big a deal. You can leave it open. Okay, the 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 thing I would not do. I do not advise this in any way, shape, or form. Do not put looking for next opportunity, open to new opportunities, as your headline or as your, as your uh, current work experience. You are wasting the most prime real estate that recruiters use to search, that recruiters use to search. So it, uh, if I'm looking for a project manager, and I type the keywords in project manager, greater Chicago area, technology consulting, and so on. What LinkedIn is doing is it's feeding me back the people who best satisfy that based on a number of other factors that I'm not going to go into here. It's not as simple as it sounds. It's a complicated algorithm, which I actually explain in my LinkedIn videos. But, but what I don't want to see is looking for an opportunity uh, number one, it's kind of a turnoff for recruiters. Number two, that is what LinkedIn is using to serve up the project management resources, sales resources, marketing resources, whatever it is, to me, to me. So now you're wasting your opportunity. What you can do if you are truly looking is there is a section where you can make a note to the recruiters, turn it on, put some notes in there. Recruiters who have the LinkedIn packages that um, that are recruiting know who is open to new opportunities based on those notes. You do not need to make it public. Trust me, that private aspect is good enough. It really is. So I know I know that kind of went off there a little bit, but it's something that's really important for you guys to know. Don't do that. Don't, don't. When search results come up, number one, you're less likely to come up. And when you do come up, instead of it saying, you know, project manager professional, and it says open for next opportunity. You're not becoming more attractive to the recruiters. You really aren't. Okay. Scott, how are you? Kathy, hey, good to see you from down the block. All right. Rosa Brand, hey, how you doing? Rosa, hope you like the pep talk. All right. Rosa is in the leadership program. Kat, I, Kathy's in the leadership program. Yep. Love that. Wow, look at that. Then I finally got in. Oh, you people, these are all questions from before. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Varun, you got it. Carrie Freeman, how you doing? Brooke Sachs, how you doing, Brooke? Brooke is 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 a wonderful part of the Mao Academy. Great to have you. M Mamadou from West Africa. I love this first live session. Can we get can we get is that Mamadou? A big high five and a live office hours hug. Great to have you from West Africa. I love that. Connie Cotter. Well, Connie, you got you got in the flesh yesterday. Real live. We even, if you are in the Mile Walk Academy, I, th I, I saw that picture. With, uh, we even have a picture of me and Connie, which we love to do. Selfies are fun. Hey, Beth, I wonder if you're Beth in the Mile Walk Academy, but how are you? Melanie is a Mile Walk Academy person. Danny, how are you, boot camper? Love it. Okay, Carrie Freeman. How do you feel about an employer asking a candidate to take an Enneagram test? Had three interview, three, hold on. Sorry, hang on, let me get back to this. 
How do you feel about an employer asking a candidate to take an Enneagram test, had three great interviews, had to wait a week to get this test, and then submitted results that night waiting to hear from them on next steps, hopefully the weekend before. Okay, I have never taken an Enneagram test. Uh, I know it is a, you know, it's one of those personality tests, like maybe like a Myers-Briggs or whatever. Um, I don't, you know, to me, uh, I, I have... So, I, okay, I have different philosophies on this. Number one, don't sweat them. Number two, don't prepare for them. And anybody who tells you to try to prepare for these kind of tests, that's the most ridiculous advice I've, I've ever heard because you are who you are. Now, what I have an issue with, so you're asking me about how I feel about, about, the, about the employer. I have an issue with employers using those tests to make black and white hiring decisions and I'll tell you why. When I take, uh, like I've t I take the Myers-Briggs test like a couple times a year, just for fun. Every time I take it, I come up something different. How I'm feeling that day, the way I answered the questions, what's going on in my life, that's what work is like. So on, at work, uh, you deal with political issues, economic issues, family stress, everything that goes on in your life acts upon you on any given day at any given moment in time. Those factors are impossible to simulate when your brain is in an, in an inert state, which is, which is what it is in when you take an IQ test. In fact, it's not even in an inert state, it's in a bad state because most people are stressed out. So I don't love them using that. So you're asking how do I feel about it? I don't like it. I don't like you know that you're waiting here, I don't know, however long. So I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if that makes you feel better or worse. You take it, you do your best, you hope, you know, you hope it goes. Okay. But there's a zillion of these. I've taken um, you know, Wonderlicks, Disc Profiles, Myers Briggs. I've never taken this um anagram. I mean, I don't know if that's a proper name or if that's just a a generic name that you're using, but I, I've not taken that one. So I hope that helps. Oh, Kathleen Phillips, how you doing? It is not raining in Southern California. Yeah, it is earlier for you, right? It's nine, not even 10 o'clock. All right, Michelle, Glenn. Oop, where'd you go? Uh-oh, hang on, sorry. Um, sorry, folks, hold on one second. My chat is like blowing up and uh, hold on. I saw I'm looking for Michelle. Okay, Joy from Nashville. Michelle, I was just there. We had a great time. You can check my Instagram page or my Facebook page. You are welcome. You are officially employed and a career changer. I love it. Well, I'm glad to have you. Michelle, get in the Leadership Monthly program. It's fun. If you're not, I don't think you are. Johnny, great to have you. Danny, and Julie. Place a, oh yeah, thank you for the coaching. Mr. Mobius, caught attention of a potential employer. No open position, but no open position posted, but set up a phone interview. How to prepare without a set position. You should prepare the same way. However, the only thing that, so let's, okay, let's, let's, this is awesome. And let's back this up a little bit. Everybody on this session who's job searching, should check out my video about how to apply when there's no job opening. I give away a seven sentence cover letter and it's a way, maybe Mr. Mobius used it, I don't know, but regardless, it's a way to target into an employer. Now, if you are targeting into an employer, you have an idea of what it is that you do, what it is they do, obviously, and what it is that they, the products that they sell or the services that they offer, okay? so. What I, would, what I would do is I would make sure that I took a look at their organization, the profile of the individuals in the unit or units that you would be most likely to go into. What do their backgrounds look like? What do their LinkedIn profiles and descriptions say they do? Now you're starting to get an idea of what, what types of positions are there. Okay, this, this is prep work. When you get into when you get into the the interview, 
one of the early questions that you should be asking is, matter of fact, you probably don't even need to ask this because they likely will offer it up. Like, hey, this is great. We wanted to talk to you because we're always looking for good, talented salespeople, system engineers, accountants, whatever it might, whatever it might be. Ask them if they don't offer it up. You know, these are the kind of areas we feel you would fit in. They probably would do that and say, hey, based on your background, you know, hey, we, we loved your background. We just want to get a sense of what you're interested in and so on. What I would do is I would turn it back to them and I would say, okay, just based on my background, what are the areas that you think I would fit in? Or, or, or another way to ask it, an even better way to ask it, in fact, is what, what, do you, what would you need the most help with right now? And what you're really saying is, what would you need the most help with right now where my background would support my ability to help you with that? That's effectively what you're saying. So that's that's what I would do when I get in the interview. Then every other lesson I've ever taught you from how to interview on applies. That's what I would do. All right. Trent from Oklahoma, great to have you. Hi, Kara. Love the new pic. I think Kara's YouTube pic is the same. Maybe it's a different picture. Sharon, where do we include skills hard and soft? It, I took all of those after viewing your postings, but when I sent my resume to JobScan, it lowered my score because I had not had any listed. Okay. Don't forget. This is not just for Sharon. Don't forget to sign up for this, okay? Because I'm going to show you exactly where to put them and exactly how to lay them down and tighten up your real estate and make sure that the job scans and the applicant tracking systems can find those skills, okay? But Sharon, thank you for serving up that question for me. Um, so here's what I like to do and how I, the spots I would put them in in the resume and exactly how I would go to job scan and, and, and double check this. It is important, so all of you that look at my how to build your ultimate professional resume video, it is important, I mean this is a fantastic one, where should you put the skills? It is important that the skills, hard and soft, be in the resume. I'm going to qualify this and we're going to handle each of them a little differently. There's hard skills which I call core competencies. Okay, that's my terminology and core competencies are specific business functions that you have working knowledge of and that you are adept at or specific skills, technologies, software solutions, whatever it might be, okay? How to do certain things, statistical analysis, uh, budget, uh, budgeting, cost-based accounting, whatever it might be. That's a, that's a competency slash skill, okay? In the career profile, in the second paragraph, I like you to just list them out. The, what the intent of the career profile, the top paragraph is what will put into the reviewer's mind who you are, what you're about. The second paragraph with the skills, I zip right over because what I know you should be doing is you should be listing the things that I would expect that person, whoever does that function, skills that they should have. So for, as an example, if you are a project, a senior project manager that runs technology projects, I would expect to see that your core competencies include software development, life cycle development, planning, budgeting, monitoring, financials, steering committee stuff, risk management, so on and so on, a whole bunch of these things. I would expect them there, and I'll just gl gloss right over them. But the computer system doesn't know that. Job scan doesn't know that. The applicant tracking system doesn't know that. So for the cheap seats, you list them out. Don't put them in tables because that confuses job scan and it confuses the applicant tracking systems. One, comma, the next one, comma, and so on. Now you've listed them up. All you technologists out there, all you financial planners out there, all you accountants with your CPAs and your MBAs, and all, you can list that stuff in the career profile. Okay, so you've got all that stuff, uh, and if you've got 25 skills as a technologist, don't list them all up top. List like the five biggest ones that are the most important. Okay, then as you get into the body of the resume, you want to reiterate those skills and use those terms in the body, all right? Now, the soft skills. I do not like when somebody just tells me that they're detail-oriented, 
okay? I don't want you to tell me you're detail-oriented. I don't care that the job description says detail-oriented. If the job description says detail-oriented, self-starter, compassionate, empathetic, I don't care what they are, put those words in the resume, but don't leave them hanging. So, you know, show detail-oriented by doing what? What did you do? Um, because you were able to find expenses that the company couldn't, you know, wouldn't have otherwise used, and you increased the profits because, you know, because you did that because you're detail oriented. That's what I want to see. So the detail oriented is in the body of the resume, and you substantiate that. Then, then if you must, at the bottom of the resume, for all of you that have skills that you know that maybe they were a while ago, maybe they're not as important, maybe they're things that a lot of everybody else has. You can have a skills section way at the bottom and then list them all out and you can double count them. So if you're a cost-based accountant or whatever, or you use certain software systems, you can put that at the end and you can put that up in your career profile as well. You will be covered. Trust me, you do that, you'll get past those applicant track systems. And and the human eye, so if, if you send me your resume and you say I'm a senior project manager or whatever, when I open it, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through this really fast. So I'm gonna read the top, I'm gonna spend more time up at the top, and then I'm gonna look at the second paragraph, I'm like, oh, I already, I, I can, like the words are programmed in my mind as a recruiter, I know what I'm looking for. And that the la I wanna end this on one other thing. Um, Sharon and everybody else, you all as job seekers think you have to put your resume together to give us all the information that you think we want. And that's, you know, sorry, let me say it differently. You want to put all the information in your resume about what you offer, okay? I, when I read a resume and when other recruiters read a resume, when they open the resume, they're not reading your resume, they're skimming it, right? That's what everybody tells you. But do you know what they're actually doing? They're looking for what they want. So if I'm looking for a senior project manager, I'm not reading your resume. I'm looking for the words in the resume that I need to know, that I know you need to have in order for you to do this job. So I will find them because I'm actually looking for them. All right, so think about that when you prep your resume. Don't get me wrong, your question is awesome because you know to the human eye, I gotta see them. To the applicant tracking systems and if you're checking them with job scan, it's gotta find them, so they need to be there. So I've already answered that. But I just want you to know philosophically, when I open the resume, and if you've been to some of my resume webinars, actually, and if you're coming to my resume writing class, I show you exactly how I look through it, but as I'm looking through it, I'm looking for what I want. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. What would the recruiter want to see based on this job, this job's uh, description, and this company? All right, so I hope that helps you. That was a phenomenal question, a phenomenal question. We're going to have to cut this one up. All right, hope that helped. Timothy Branch, how you doing? AR, Angela, how are you? Wayne from Toronto. I got a lot of Canadian friends. Eric, how you doing? Going to be in San Francisco in the not so distant future. Deepak from India. Hey, Rico, how are you? Gary Madrin, my good buddy, how you doing? Letitia, how are you? Irvine, California. I'm going to be in Irvine soon too. Robin with a Y. I oh, by the way, I always love that with a Y. Cindy's with a Y. My wife is Linda with a Y. Hi from Charlotte. Johnny Stevens, first in person at the company. They booked the first two hours as a group project with part of the team I'd be managing. What should I focus on in preparation? Johnny, so first thing is I, um, I, I'm a little surprised that's the route they're going. I don't, have a pro I, don't, I don't really have a problem with it. I just, I'm a little surprised. Uh, I would ask them, you know, what are, what are the most important aspects that they want you to cover in the present, you know, in the presentation? Um, this group project, you know, any, uh, you know, concept that they can give you, what I, the way I would ask it is not, hey, you know, can you tell me exactly, you know, what the group project is? I'm assuming that they want you to be a little surprised when you get there. It's totally okay. But, um, just so I can get my thinking cap on, are there any particular areas uh, that you know that you want me to have you know be alert alert on when I get there? And I would ask in advance. You'd be surprised how much they will tell you about what the project is, or if they don't tell you specifically what the project is, 
Then what they might tell you is these are kind of the things we're looking for. You know how? You, so I mean, let, and let's be obvious. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish off with this because I think this is what you're looking for from me. If you're getting asked to go in and 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 talk with the people you're going to be managing, they're going to be looking for what are they going to look for? Your organizational skills, your influencing skills, your le right leadership skills. Your in, you know, are you inspiring them? How are you interacting with the team? Are you open and welcoming of ideas? Are you you know, are you getting data quickly, digesting, and then making decisions as a leader? I mean, all of the things that you should be doing. So what I would you know, what I would think about before I go in there. So first thing is I would ask. I always ask. If they say, hey, we don't want to tell you, that's fine, but you got to ask, all right? So that's the first thing. Second thing is I would think about all of the things that are going to be important for me as their leader. If you are not in my leadership program, you should be in that too. But uh, but I would think about all that and then I would make sure that I was on, on the game, like those five, six things I just mentioned. That's what I would do. Mona, Christy, and Noir from Jakarta, how you doing? Leticia, hi from California. I've been contacted by a recruiter to discuss available opportunities. What are the pros and cons to working with staffing recruiters? Well, there, in my opinion, uh, technically, there should be no cons whatsoever. You might think there are cons. There really are not. There really are not. It doesn't matter that the company is paying them a fee. The company contracted with them and is going to pay them a fee because you are likely hard to find. Uh, the advantage is that the recruiter should know the organization, should know the people or at least the types of questions or interviewing styles or any of that stuff, and they can prepare you. The other thing is recruiters, good ones, are professionals at what they do, meaning they should best understand how to interview. They can coach you and all that good stuff. All positives. There's no reason uh, for you, you know, not to use a recruiter if a, a recruiter you know, is, is reaching out to you. There really isn't. I mean, unless the recruiter it just has a bad bedside manner. But I don't I don't I don't see any downside there. All right. Zipping on by Daryl Newman. It, so you gotta have the question marks in front because I'm gonna be moving. I, I'm only at 1104 and it's 12 o'clock and, and and we're gonna need to be ending here soon. Um all right. So wait, but before before I before Daryl Newman, folks, make sure to sign up for this. Sign up by April 8th, and even if you can't go, you might decide you want all that stuff I showed you. Uh, you know, you get the pregame emails for free. You get the, the session if you can make it for free. And if you can, it's 49 bucks. I mean, it's not, and, and there's even more in there. All right. Uh, Daryl Newman, messages to individuals at targeted companies has not produced any interviews, feeling deflated and ignored. I'm not sure what your question is. First thing is, are you using the proper templates? language are you teeing it up effectively are you contacting the right companies are you contacting the right people i mean I, i'm not sure what to say there but this much i can tell you the people that are in my job search boot camp that get the 10 networking templates that are designed for all of that stuff they get results i mean and they really get results and i gave you a uh, one or two of those templates for free in the boss hunting cover letters, I would really try to use those. And believe me, you should be getting results. They get results. Everybody gets results with those. All right. Davida, how are you? Manisha, how you doing? Yes, you are a leadershipper and a boot camper, and Davida is a boot camper too. All right. B. Sutton, multiple interviews for same job, sent thank yous, uh, sent thank you, you email after each. Okay, great. But handwritten letter once or each. No. Uh, if they remove candidacy after last interview, send another thank you. Which form? Okay. Uh, these are great questions, by the way. Here is my favorite way to do this. It, as you get into an interview process, no matter what the interview is, phone, in person, Skype, video, whatever, send a thank you email right away in the process. If you go in and meet people, if you go in and meet people, then what I would do is send them an email and wait a day or so, then drop a thank you card in the mail, okay? And the reason I like to do that is if they're in the, in the event that they're interviewing other candidates and you were early, or even if you're not, but if, if they're interviewing other candidates, that thank you card gets there, you know, five days later, give or take, and then they have to physically open it. It's another reminder of you. 
okay? If you get down to the end and then you interview with them again and you know, you're gonna get the job, what you could do is if you know that, you can send them another thank you, which is totally different, which is like, hey, thanks, I'm really looking forward to getting here. I'm looking forward to working through this or whatever. If you get rejected, what I would do is I would send the an email only and I would, I would send an email only according to the uh, video that I put out there on uh, how to get the job after being rejected. And then what I might do is I might wait to send a card a couple weeks later and just say, hey, I, again, I really wanted to thank you for everything. And then what I would do is I would follow up with them again via email weeks later. That's how I would go about that. Trust me, stay on top of them. If, if you didn't do something egregious and if they didn't say something like, listen, and I think your name is Brian, uh, don't, you know, you just don't fit here, man. Like as long as it's not one of those, you know, hey, we decided this guy or gal was a little more in line or we really love you, but just not for this or whatever. Kristen Morrison, how are you? My boot camper leader there, Mike A, retracted, Danny, hey, A Gardner, Dinesh, Mike A, Robin, I have an upcoming interview. Uh, I'm trying to come up with questions. Robin, get the interview intervention, $7 shipping and handling offer, and you get a booklet with that as a bonus called How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. Get that. And don't worry that the book is on back order for a few more days. You get it right away. You get that. What I just said, you get that like that. Hugo Felix, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Congratulations again. Love that text. Hope you're doing well. Arpan, how you doing? From India. Dinesh. Smile XET. Etienne from South Africa. How are you? My current email address cannot be my actual name as it is already in use. What do I do? Uh, trust me when I tell you, you can add a number or two at the end and it will be available. I see somebody is um, I was trying to review something that was hidden. I don't know. Timothy Branch. Hi Andy. How can I find email addresses of individuals at my targeted company? Two things. So, for everybody, let's say you get, you go on LinkedIn, you find somebody's name, it's Andrew Lasavita. You wanna go work at MileWalk. You go to a site called hunter.io, H-U-N-T-E-R.io, it's super simple. Go to hunter.io, you type MileWalk in the box, you hit the button, and it pops up that it's first initial, last name at milewalk.com. It gives you that. Then you take the LinkedIn name of the person. And let's say it's A. La Civita. You put A. La Civita at milewalk.com. You take that email address and you put it into another site called verifyemailaddress.org. O -R -G. You put that in. You hit the button. You check the little box that says you're not a robot. You hit the button and up pops the thing that says green check mark. That looks good. We found it eight bazillion times on the internet that it's been verified high probability, and then you send me an email. That's what you do. Now, it's a little trickier if the person's name is common, but that works. It really does, 99% of the time. John Paul was asking about the package. Uh, that'll be soon. I mean, like you can, a lot of you can get that and watch that stuff and get the booklet in advance. By the way, the resume writing class, it's free, so you can just come. And just show up and I'll give you all that stuff. But if you if you can't make it and you want to get in for that 49 bucks, you can get the booklet, the workbook, the template, everything immediately as soon as you enroll. And then you get that video I showed you with all the common exceptions and all that stuff. And then when the session's over, I'll drop the um, the video into the training portal. So if you're if you're really good, you know interested in getting rolling and not to mention you would have a lot of stuff and be able to look at that before the session and during the session you'll have all that where the people who are getting it free are going to have to wait till the session's over all right jr zier oh john from houston after a two-month interview process i finally got an offer and landed a dream job yes 
Thanks for all your excellent advice. You are welcome. You are welcome. Glad, John, glad to help. Love it. And thank you for thank you for sharing. Vincent from Argentina, how you doing? Miles, good to see you again. Miles, you don't need to sign up for the free resume materials because you are in the boot camp and you have even more souped up stuff. Uh, if you have a question, just email uh, us at support at malwalk.com and we can point you to where your stuff is. Floyd, uh, how do you do a resume going in a different direction? I have an entire career changer playlist on my YouTube channel. Check that out. And I tell, and I, sh I walk you through that stuff. All right, where's your, do you post a question here, Chan? I'm just zipping through. How do you register for the show? Oh, Miles, because you're a boot camper, we probably weren't even sending you this, but we can, Kara, do me a favor, let's take a note. Just send Miles the uh, registration link. By the way, if you guys, so like, I try to, although you might think I send you a ton of emails, I try to minimize the number of emails I send you guys. And if you're in the programs, you, you don't get nearly as many emails as some of the other people. CK, how you doing? Jordan Kelso. I'm looking for full-time work and set up an LLC for part-time work. I signed an NDA to secure part-time work. How should I handle the NDA questions in the in the ATS during the application submissions? I'm not sure what you mean uh, by the NDA questions. If you clarify in the comments, like give me an... So when this is over, which is going to be soon, in the comments, as soon as this is done, just tell me, like give me an example of what NDA comment you mean and I'll tell you exactly how to handle it. All right, let me see if I can. Johnny, you're welcome. Yeah, if you're signed up, you're, you'll get the notes and you know, it's just like, but like when you get your pre-lessons for the resume writing class, it's at the bottom. I put like a little PS, like if you want this stuff and you can have it forever and keep it. But it's not like you're gonna get a ton of sales emails. I mean, this is a, it's a free program. All right. This is a great question. Joseph, if you get an offer for another position while you're still employed somewhere else, this is what happens most of the time. Do you advise letting your current employer know you are intending to leave and maybe get a counter offer? First thing is, this is the Andy Lasavita School of Etiquette and Integrity. Number one, you never, ever let your employer know that you are looking. If you are doing this to hold somebody's feet to the fire because you want a counteroffer, I'm not going to give, by the way, this has nothing to do with you, Joseph, just any in general. I do not teach on how to do that because I don't want anybody to do that. I want you to, if you are unhappy with your finances at your current employer, you go to your employer and you tell them that and you work that through. If you're not happy and you want to leave, then what you do is you go, you interview, you get an offer, you sign it, you go back and you resign. That's it. The, the level of discussion is I have accepted another offer. Here is my last date. That's it. You don't go, well, I got this other offer. I'm thinking about leaving in the hopes of getting a counteroffer and why not? Number one, you will find out that the reason you wanted to leave was not solely about money. 72% of people who accept a counteroffer from a current employer are no longer with the employer 12 months later. Why is that? Because they now have the scarlet letter on their chest and the employer now knows that they are that person is a, is a flight risk. Or you will realize that you did not want to leave just because of money. There were other things ailing you. Most 80% of the 72% are gone within six months. So I do not recommend counter offers. I do not recommend employers extend them and I do not recommend anybody accept them. Trust me when I tell you watching this day in and day out for a 30 years of watching this, but really 15 of doing it all day every day, counter offers are really bad. And if you want more insight, philosophy, and all the tactics of how to resign and how to resist a counteroffer, that's in interview intervention. I go into detail and I show you the what's and the wherefores. I do not ever, if, the, if you worked with me and you told me that you got another offer, I would thank you and I would probably, you know, we'd transition or whatever, or depending on your capacity, I might show you the door right at the moment. You always need to be ready for that. Uh, but I would never, I would never do that. I would never do that. 
it's it's bad form. So I hope that helped. Wayne, this is a great question. Since most companies don't list what the salary range for the job is, how do you avoid applying and interviewing for a job way below your salary expectations? Wayne, look at the job description. If you like that job, you apply. That's it. You will hash out what they're going to pay you based on how well you do in the interviews and and uh, and the value you can bring and the way you negotiate and all that good stuff. I would not I would not worry about that. And I have a ton of salary negotiation. Uh, videos where I do discuss how to handle that up front in the screen and throughout and up to the counter up up to the uh, 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 offer itself and the counter offer and by counter offer I don't mean I don't mean counter offer with your your employer I mean counter offer with your new employer's offer and for you to ask for more all right all right I'm just buzzing through here looking for some more with the question marks here um, and Julie, government, I think I got that one. Performance. Okay. Performance Driver Society. Hi, Andrew. I'm a college student who just secured an internship at Siemens. Congratulations for you. The company has some of their internships stay on after the summer. How can I make sure I'm the one who stays? One of the things about uh, being effective over the internship is when you get there, whoever your boss is, ask your boss, him or her, what's expected of me over the course of the internship and what level of performance do I need to accomplish and all that good stuff in order to be invited to stay. So I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly interested in this organization and working here long term. Express your interest. Get the details from them as to what you know, what level of success you need to attain. And then I would be monitoring that and I'd be asking for feedback along the way. Make sure to do that. All right, hang on, let me see. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to Jordan's question about the NDA. So Jordan was asking about how to handle the non-disclosure agreements when asked on an applicant tracking system about an NDA. So first thing is, have you signed any agreement that may affect your ability to work at X or have you signed any agreements with prior employers? What you could do, and I hear again, I don't know if the future employer is affected by the prior employer's agreement. If the future employer is not going, you know, if you sign an NDA because you work for a capital markets company and you're now going to go work for an energy company where you're also going to be trading, that is likely not going to affect your ability to work there because your capital markets NDA restriction probably restricted you from going to other prop shops or whatever. By the way, don't worry about my language here, but just go with me on this. It, you know, if you're if you're crossing industries, you're doing something like that. If that's the case, I would say I do have an NDA. It will not affect. I, I have carefully selected your organization to ensure that my NDA will not affect that. And I would put that in the comment section, in the cover letter, in the whatever, that you need to do that. That's how I handle If it will affect, then I would not apply. Because you should, I mean, like, that's ultimately the, the point. So I hope that helps. Okay. So I do want I do want to clarify this, and I'm going to answer a couple more questions. Um, Kara's telling me that that, and I get I, I I now see how this can be confusing. The resume masterclass is free. You can register, and it's free, and you just need to register by April eighth, and and I'm going to conduct it so a week from a week from tomorrow. I think wait that's a week, week from tomorrow. If you are interested in getting what I just showed you there for forty nine bucks. You're, if you're registered for the thing, you're going to see that. We're going to email you and in, with your lessons, and at the bottom, you'll just have an option if you want to go and get it. If you are interested in that program and, and, and are going to attend the Resume Masterclass or don't want to wait until next week when we start emailing you, um, then just email us at support at milewalk.com and we'll just send you a link and you can, I need to clean up one thing and, we'll just, and, you can, and you can buy it and have all the stuff right away. The reason I wanted to show you this today was because the deadline is Monday. So you're not going to see me again until next week on Thursday. So, so I just, that's what I was trying to mention. Sorry if I confused you on that. 
Um, I, I, I was just trying to create some way to get people who couldn't make this an opportunity to get it. And I hope you understand why I don't want to just give all that away. But I think $49 is a pretty sweet deal. So you could just email us at support at malwalk.com. We'll send you the offer. Kara, don't send the offer yet until we're done with this because there's one thing I have to update in the in the system. Okay, let me see if I can get a couple more here. Aaron, you're welcome. Sherry, how are you? I've had four interviews with a large company. I did apply for three more in the system. That means, um, I, I don't know if you had four separate interviews or meaning four interviews for one role. The recruiter where I am listed as screen said not to keep applying for other roles while I'm screening, but no guarantee I am getting this job, so want to be considered. Sherry, do, listen to the recruiter. Don't apply. It, it, it's what... What the company wants to do is, is take you through a process and see if you fit. If you don't fit and that recruiter likes you and you handle it with class and you get to be buds with the recruiter, they're just going to move you to another area. That's that's what I would do. I would not keep confused, you know, because what you're doing is you're creating internal conflict for them. So even though it's a large organization, I don't know what the specific um, situation is. But you know what? If you and I were going to do that one-on-one, -on -one, I'm assuming we can go through this, but I would not keep applying if the recruiter said no. All right. <laughs> Pilafambi, that furniture back there, uh, can you see it? What? It's been there for a long while. I don't always, t my, I'm not, always, it depends how I sit. My office is, is the configuration is, is a, a little interesting, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, Kamar Tariq, any tips on getting my foot in the door in an air, with an airline for a marketing project manager role? Yes, that, uh, if you are not sure if there is one open, I, I, earlier in the show I mentioned how to, uh, how to apply when there's no job opening. Go check that video out. And I give you the exact language to use in the seven sentence cover letter. That one's free. All right. Mahai, hey, hey, quick functional question. How much percentage do you think your resume is and how much is your impression on the recruiter? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Mona Christie, I received a phone screen for a job in the US. When they realized I live in Jakarta, they responded, I need to check with the hiring team. That would make sense. That's what I would have told you. V kind of how to reply to this. You wait and see. You got to be you got to be crystal clear if you are not in the city of the job you're applying to. And if you're especially if you're not in the country, there could be visa issues and other things like that. Just open and honest. Uh, Metal Monkey Videos question I have been working for a staffing agency and they want me to keep the company names confidential. How can I write about my work experience on my resume without having to reveal their names? I I'm not really quite certain why a staffing agency would want you to keep. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Hold on. You, I think I got what you mean. Metal Monkey Videos is contracting through a staffing agency that has placed him at companies like Pepsi, Coca-Cola, or you know Quaker Oats or whatever. And they do not want in... They do not want somebody to see that, say, Tech Systems, the staffing agency, has staffed Metal Monkey Videos at Pepsi. You would say large beverage company. That's it. And you do that on the, on the, on the resume. And then when you get in the interview, you, then I don't know if, you're, if, you're, if you have an NDA where you can't even discuss it. But if you can't, then you, you, you should not. Take those NDAs seriously. But that's what I would do. Large beverage company, large retail company, Fortune 500 retail company, just a descriptor would be okay. All right. Wait, I think I'm getting, I think, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. So I see that some of you have loaded your question a couple times. 
What happens, so I open up my screen a little bit before 11 o'clock, maybe 10.45 or 10.30, and I know some of you put your questions in, which is totally okay. When you come to the show, if you come in at 10, uh, 10 minutes late, or, or which is not late, you come in when you can come in. But if you, if you haven't been here from the beginning, you might not see everything that I'm seeing. So if you're wondering where am I getting these questions, how am I doing that, that's what happens sometimes. And so I, I'm usually pretty good. If you put question marks in front of your question, I'm usually pretty good. And Kara is also watching, uh, watching to make sure that I don't miss anything. But I just want to let you know that make sure to, to put the question marks because I, I really do try to get everybody. But I have to, I unfortunately have to be going here to another meeting. But do me a favor. This I'm going to leave this. You're welcome to take your comments, move them over to the comment section. When I click this off, this will then open up on YouTube instantaneously and you'll be able to go over to the comment section and just ask me your question, which I encourage you to do because tomorrow over the weekend, I try to answer them because I appreciate you, you being here. Um, the, the resume writing masterclass, this thing here, the deadline is, is, is Monday. You can, you can just register for it. If you're interested in that little $49 deal, just register for this. We'll send you a message or you can email us at support at milewalk.com. All that will be available next week, and then when when we I'll conduct the session, and 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 you can come to the session, and then I'll conduct the session, and when the session is over later that day, I I put the I cut up the recording and the video and all that good stuff. I have to edit some stuff, and then I put that in the in the system that I showed you, and then you're you'll be able to get that for forty nine bucks. Just keep in mind, we're, I'm not going to send you a whole bunch of sales emails about this. If you're on the, if you're registered for the resume writing class, you'll have a little link in the PS that'll allow you to do that. And then if you registered and you missed it, we might just send you one email just to see if this is something that you want. But we're, I'm not going to give you a whole big, big thing because then I'm going into my boot camp, which starts April 17th. So, and I hope that a bunch of you will jump into that. That is the ultimate job searching program and it is a sweet deal. So right now we have a special on the boot camp. Uh, if you want to get into that, all you need to do is check the job search boot camp. Uh, page and if you you go to the Milewalk Academy you can access it there. If you don't, just Google Job Search Bootcamp and it will be the first one that comes up. Okay, folks, thank you for making this. Oh, God, it's still 124 people. Just so awesome. I love your questions. I I wish you all uh, a great happy day, happy weekend. I'll be back next Thursday. And uh, for a bunch of you, you'll see me Thursday and Friday next week uh, if you can get into the resume writing class. And if you ever have any questions about anything related to our services, our products, or where can I find something, support at milewalk.com. All right, folks, we'll see you. Have a great weekend. Take care. Talk to you soon.